Today I'd like to introduce you to what I think is one of the best cameras for plant photography. You've probably never heard of it. When it came out in 2013, I dismissed it because almost every review I read was uniformly negative. But then, in 2019, I watched one of Matthias Berling's excellent reviews on another camera in the same family. While admitting the problems, he also pointed out a different way of looking at these cameras. He was so convincing that I got on eBay and bought one. And boy oh boy, he was so right. Thanks, Matthias. The camera I'm talking about is the Sigma DP3 Merrill. It's an APS-C camera with a 75mm equivalent f2.8 lens. In other words, it's a large sensor, short telephoto camera. The lens is wonderfully sharp and focuses down to 22 centimeters, about 9 inches. While it's not a true macro lens, it gets more than close enough for superb plant photography. The sensor, a Foveon X3, is what makes this camera so special. Nobody except Sigma uses Foveon sensors in their cameras. They're quirky and cantankerous, sort of like my cat, Crackers, but they deliver some of the most detailed and beautiful images I've ever seen. There's tons of information online about Foveon sensors. If you're curious, just Google Foveon and fasten your seatbelt. Now, before I tell you why this camera is so amazing, let's get the negatives out of the way. There are quite a few. It has the worst battery life of any camera on the planet. On a good day, you'll get between 50 and 75 shots per charge. It's terrible in the low light, and you should never set the ISO above 200. The autofocus is a bit slow and not terribly accurate. The body is a smooth black bar of soap with no viewfinder and a very meh screen. Worst of all, this camera outputs a proprietary RAW file that absolutely no software other than Sigma's Photo Pro can read. Forget Adobe Camera Raw or whatever you like best, they've never heard of Sigma's RAW files. Don't waste your time on the camera's JPEGs either. Okay, enough negatives. Let's talk about why this camera is so amazing. I can say it in just two words. The images. Almost everyone who sees them describes Foveon images as three-dimensional. Textures seem to leap off the screen at you. The colors are unusual and often strangely beautiful. In many ways, they remind me of film. If you like black and white photography, this is the closest thing you can get to one of the Leica monochrome cameras at a price for everyday humans. Above all, Foveon images are amazingly detailed and crisp. 
I'm always spotting things that I never saw when I was composing the shot. If you want to produce large prints, the images can scale up, and up, and up. Even though they're physically 15 megapixels, they behave as if they were 30. There's really that much information buried in them. Now, I'm not suggesting that you should head to eBay and look for one. This isn't a camera for the faint-hearted. It won't make you a master plant photographer overnight. In fact, it will frustrate you continually. But if you approach it in the right way and practice, 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 it will start to deliver the magic. Once you've mastered a Foveon camera, you'll never look at the natural world the same way. When Noelle and I are out and about, we'll frequently point at something and say, that deserves the Sigma. And that's all for today. In part two, I'll talk about dealing with the Sigma DP3 Merrill's problems. Almost all can be corrected or at least improved. I'll also pass along Matthias Berling's excellent way of looking at this camera. It certainly changed it in my eyes from a loser to a botanical treasure. See you then.